Hello, my name is Andrew Perkins and welcome to part 10 of my Laravel tutorial. In this video I'm going to go over some of the things that you can do to secure your application as well as what Laravel does automatically for you to make your apps more secure. So by default Laravel does protect you in several ways. First of all it protects us from SQL injection as long as you're using the Fluent Query Builder or Eloquent which we've been using throughout this tutorial. So it does this by doing prepared statements, which is going to escape any user input that may come in through your forms. So if a hacker would come here to our add new author form, he may try to insert a quote and then run his own hacker SQL query here to damage our database. Um, but this wouldn't work since we're using Eloquent. It's going to escape this SQL out and it'll just be saved as text into the database. Uh, so as long as you're using the Fluent Query Builder or Eloquent, you are safe from SQL injection. Laravel will also protect your cookies. So if we switch into our text editor and we go to the config folder and open up application.php, you'll recall when we were setting up our application, we uh, created this unique application key. And you can see that it's used uh, by the cookie class to generate secure encrypted strings and hashes. Um, so Laravel will protect your cookies by using a hash and making sure that no one tampers with them. Laravel also provides CSRF or cross-site request forgery protection. To enable that we just need to go into one of our forms. So uh, let's go and open up our new view file. This is our form for creating a new author. So to protect us from a CSRF attack we can use the form classes token method and this will create a unique token in our form. So if we switch into our browser and we go to the uh, add new author page and we just take a look at the source code, we can see that that has created this hidden form field for us called CSRF token. And then here's the token. And what this is going to do is it's just going to make sure that the request is coming from our site, our application, and then it's not coming from somewhere else. So with that token, we now just need to make sure that it's checking for a forged request. So to do that we're going to use a filter. So let's go back into our text editor and we just need to make sure that before the author slash create route is requested that we check for a forged request using the CSRF filter. So let's open up routes.php and if we scroll to the bottom of this file you can see that we have these route filters. We have the before filter and the CSRF filter. So the before filter, if you read the comment, just allows you to do stuff before every request to your application. And the CSRF filter allows you to check for a forged request. And if it has been forged, it's going to return a 500 error. So we'll use these together to protect our routes. So let's go back up to the top here where we've defined our routes. And so here's our author slash create route, which handles processing the new form. So we'll just use the before filter and tell it to check for a forged request using the CSRF filter. And so that will handle checking for a forged request for our uh, create route. We're going to need to do the same thing for the update route and the delete route. So let's set the before filter here for the CSRF filter. I'll just copy it and paste it so that it's a little easier. There we go. And then we need to go update these view files to make sure we're displaying the token. So let's go to the edit form and call the token method here. And then we'll go into the view file for where we display the uh, delete button. And we'll call the token method here as well. And so that's going to protect our application from any CSRF attacks. Laravel also protects you from any mass assignment vulnerabilities by allowing you to set which fields in your table are allowed to be saved via mass assignment. So to give you an example of this, let's go into our authors controller. And down here in our create action, this is where we're saving a new author into the database. We're using the create method here, and we're choosing which data from the form should be saved into which field. So we're saving just the name and the biography. So in this case, we're not doing mass assignment. To save via mass assignment, 
you would use something like you'd create an author variable and then you would create a new author using the author model and then you might just pass in all of the data from the form into the author's constructor here and then choose to save that author. The problem with saving your author in this way is that this data is coming from the form and you have no control over what that data is. It's on the client side and a hacker can manipulate the form in any way and he can pass any data in that he wants to. So if the hacker knows that you have like an admin field in your table which will determine if your author is an administrator or not, the hacker could automatically save the new author and give that author administrative rights since you're just taking any data that he passes in and you're just saving it into the database. So if you do ever need to do this type of save to where you're just passing in all of the data to the author's constructor, you should make sure that you set the accessible property in your model. And this is going to protect you from someone saving into a field in your table that you don't want them to have access to. So let's open up our author model. And at the top, we can set a public static property called accessible and just set that equal to an array and then just list out the fields in your table that you want to be allowed to be saved with mass assignment. So we can make sure only the name and the bio fields are allowed to be saved by mass assignment. And so now if a hacker tries to create a new author and make that author an admin, he won't be able to because only the name and the bio field can be saved. So I'll just remove this code here we're not going to be saving with mass assignment. Um, we're just going to continue using the create method to pick which fields that we're saving into. So we'll save this. Um, I will just keep this accessible property here just for reference so you can see it. It's not going to hurt anything in our application. So I'll leave that there and I'll make sure I save my view view. Alright, so that's how you can protect yourself from mass assignment if you ever do need to save in that way. Now for this last one, I'm going to show you how you can protect yourself against cross-site scripting. So what may happen is a hacker might come to your application and try to use one of your forms to embed some JavaScript into the HTML of your website. So he might enter in his hacker name and then open up a script tag and run some type of malicious JavaScript code here but I'm just going to do an alert to show you that the JavaScript can be embedded into your HTML and then we'll enter in the hacker bio here and let's save this author and here where we're displaying the hacker's name you can see that the JavaScript code has been escaped and sanitized it's displaying as text it has not been interpreted as JavaScript and that's because we used the HTML classes link to route method which will make sure that your data is escaped uh, you can also pass data to the form class and it's going to sanitize your data there as well. But if we go to the author view page, here we can see that the JavaScript has been ran. We get our alert message and the JavaScript's been embedded right into our HTML of our website. And that's not good. We need to make sure that we are sanitizing our data wherever we're displaying it. So to protect us from this, we'll go back into our text editor and here's our view file which is displaying the author's information and here's where we're displaying the author's name we can use the HTML class and its entities method which is just a wrapper for the PHP function HTML entities and that'll make sure to escape any HTML so if we go back to the browser and we refresh this we can now see that the script tags have been escaped out and it's no longer being interpreted as JavaScript it's just text here you can also use the shorthand version of this so rather than having to type out HTML and then the entities method you can just use the global E method and that'll do the exact same thing so if we go back to the browser and refresh you can see it's still escaping that for us so we'll also want to make sure that we're escaping the biography as they could insert some JavaScript in there as well and we're gonna need to go into the edit view as we're displaying the author's name here. There we go. And so that will protect us from cross-site scripting. So I hope you found this video useful in making your applications more secure. And thanks for watching.